Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I'm going to give you guys an update on my recent Tarhumara Dwarf Boa litter. We're going to see close-ups of the babies and I'll also show you both the mom and the dad, say a little bit about them. So be sure to stay tuned for that. So a few weeks ago, if you've been following the channel, I was really happy to have this litter of Dwarf Tarhumara Mountain Boas. This is a dwarf form of boa from northern Mexico. And these are one of my favorites, of course. And I hadn't had them in a couple years, so it's great to have some babies on the ground. And so as you can see, this is the mother. And she's a full-grown ba uh, boa. She's uh, born in 2017 here, so she's five years old. She's about four feet long, and she's not going to get much bigger than this. Uh, in addition to their small size, what's great about these guys is they have this beautiful dark coloration. Lots of uh, different shades of browns and blacks as well as a lot of like pink and even some bluish greenish overtones to them. So they're a very, very beautiful boa. I think these guys have just been getting more and more popular over the last few years. Uh, they used to be, it seems like they used to be a lot easier to find, but they weren't as popular going back five, 10 years, but now they're super popular, but uh, really hard to find. So I'm really happy to have this litter on the ground. Um, they've been described by many people as mini Argentine boas, so they're just a very small dark boa like an Argentine boa. Personality wise, they're also quite uh, uh, captivating. They're typically, they have a reputation for being a little hissy as babies, but it's basically all bluff. Uh, they almost never bite, and when they do strike as babies, they don't actually latch on. It's just kind of a bluff. So quite entertaining. But my adults are all really mellow. They're also enjoyable to handle. They don't try to escape. They're one of the more docile and mellow types of boas. They just kind of hang out when you take them out. They're not super active. You know, not quite as uh, mellow as a ball python, but more mellow than most boas. But I just really like them. And I think that uh, they have a lot to offer for someone that wants a smaller boa. Uh, it doesn't have the space and so this is the Rio Bravo bloodline animal and as I mentioned she was born here back in 2018 or sorry 2017 and I've been growing her up ever since she had her first litter just a few weeks ago was just six babies and the babies are doing really well they've all shed most of them have fed already and uh, ready you know on their way to be established for their new homes so with that said I'll get out my close-up lens. Let's have a quick look at some of the babies. There's a baby Tarhumara, and these guys are so small when they're babies. You can see my hand by comparison. Just a little tiny boa. Probably, you know, maybe about 15 inches, if even that. But real cute. And uh like the adults, they don't really move around a whole lot. You can see that this one is just kind of uh, casually looking around. There's the close-up. You can see the dark head markings and the beautiful pattern. Although they're mostly dark, they do have this beautiful circle-shaped pattern down their back. And the really nice iridescence as well, especially if you catch them in the right light. I don't know if this one's going to move for us or should probably just sit there. There's a side shot. Maybe you can see her iridescence a little better and a lot of her beautiful pinkish purplish color. And she's kind of starting to move around a little bit. Just exploring. There you can see her beautiful dark head markings and the beautiful dark pattern. So these babies sometimes are a little bit hissy and they kind of strike out but they don't usually even bite. It's just kind of a bluff. But this one isn't doing it so it just varies. Some of them are more calm than others. Here's another one, a litter mate. And this one was a little more spirited when I went to pick her up. She kind of hissed at me a bit and tried to strike at me, but uh, I managed to get her out without uh, getting bitten or anything. And when they like this, it usually lasts for, you know, a month or two. But generally they calm right down and my adults are super mellow. So not uh, anything you should be worried about if you're possibly interested in one of these Tarhumaras as a pet. 
to a not at all difficult to handle or manage. You can see she's kind of on guard there. She's got that S coil ready to strike if uh, necessary. Kind of comical. But most of these Tarahumara look pretty similar. So I'm just going to show you maybe one more after this. But they have that nice dark color. Not quite as dark as they get when they're adults. And you know similar small size and markings. There's a quick pan shot of her whole body before we put this one back and grab another litter mate to look at. Here's another example from the litter. Another nice little Tarahumara dwarf boa. As you can see, pretty similar overall to the other two. And I think these guys are, because they come from a small isolated location that probably doesn't have a lot of gene mixing, they are tend to be very similar, so I would imagine that they're probably similar to island boas, probably highly inbred, and they just have this similar look. So you're not going to see a lot of variability with these guys like we see with the true red tails and some of the other locality boas. Then there's a close-up of the head, and of course the head markings on the Tarahumara are really distinctive with their dark colors and Usually you'll see like kind of a cross marking. Sometimes it doesn't have the cross. It's just kind of like a straight line, but they have these really dark head spears. And finally, there's a scale shot. You can see how small this animal looks in my hand. I always like holding these guys in my hand because it really gives a relative size comparison for how small a baby Tarahumara boa is. Now that we've seen some of the babies, I'm going to wrap up this video by showing you guys the father of the litter. This is a 2018 male. He's a year younger than the mother of the litter. He's actually from a different line. I have a, a female Tarahumara that has a lot of pink and her overall colors are a little bit lighter. And so that's the mother of this animal. As you can see, this guy overall has a little bit lighter color than the mother of the litter that I showed you. Um, more of a brownish caramel color than, you know, less, you know, less black pigment, more really dark brown. And he's also got a lot of pink. So this guy is actually in shed right now, so he's not as brightly colored as normal, but I think you can probably see a lot of that pink, like on his, especially on his belly and his sides. Just a really beautiful animal. And he's got this really neat circle back pattern. He's got these really nicely formed ovals between his saddles, you know, going all the way down his uh, backbone. So a really beautiful pattern. And just a really mellow animal. Uh, he's probably not quite four feet, probably one of my smallest breeders ever, to be honest. Just a little guy, you know, no bigger than a corn snake. Obviously nowhere near a giant snake that uh, some people think that boas are. But uh, as I mentioned, I, I just really like these dwarf boas. I think that they're just really underrated um, I think that the popularity has gone up in the last few years as people discover all the advantages they have to offer. You know, we've heard a lot about like these super dwarf reticulated pythons that still get like, you know, 15, 16 feet long. These dwarf boas really are smaller. You know, they get to be, this is an adult size, so around four feet. You know, some of them like the crawl key might be a little bigger, like five feet, you know, but really a dwarf animal. If you want a boa that's not going to get anywhere near any kind of giant size. Um, but you know, despite their size, they still have all the behaviors of the bigger boas. So you're not going to be missing out on, you know, the cool boa constrictor biology when you get a dwarf boa. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look at these dwarf boas. I'll keep you guys updated. I imagine that the babies are probably going to be ready to go sometime in September. Uh, I just have to, you know, continue getting them established before they're ready for their new home. So be sure to stay tuned to this channel for updates. Subscribe if you haven't already and you're interested in these updates. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line or write them in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.